Good morning. Myself, I am K. Prashant Kumar, working as assistant professor in CSC Honors. Today, we'd like to discuss about the topic called syntax directed translation. So, in the compiler design CO3, there is a topic called syntax directed translation where we will have uh, we will discuss the syntax directed translation definition, construction of this syntax trees, S attribute and L attribute definitions translation schemas and emitting a translation. So, these are the contents here. So, see here what is a syntax directed translation? A syntax directed translation along with some grammar we associate some of the notations and these notations are called semantic rules. So, okay. So, within a one word we can say that a grammar plus a semantic rules, grammar plus semantic rules is equals to syntax directed translation grammar plus semantic rule. So, see here grammar. Okay. So, here there is an example here. Here there is an example. So, here they are they have given a grammar with the help of productions. Next semantic rules. Semantic rules they have given. If there is a production like this we have to apply these particular semantic rules. These particular semantic rules we have to apply. Okay. So, this is a syntax directed translation means a grammar with the help of semantic rules is known as syntax directed translation is known as syntax directed translation okay next so see here next so given grammar so syntax directed translation schema is a context free grammar so it is a context free grammar and syntax directed translation schema is used to order the semantic rules so based upon this one so if we satisfy this this particular production Okay, if we execute this particular production, this particular semantic rule we have to apply. Okay, so so this is the thing. Next, in translation schema, the semantic rules are embedded with the right side of the production. Okay, so right side of the production. So see here, if if there is a production like this, if we okay execute this particular production, we have to apply this particular semantic rules right side of the production we have to use this one suppose e tends to cap e plus e right e tends to e plus e. if we if we perform perform this parse tree okay this parse tree then we have to uh, we have to evaluate this particular semantic rule okay this particular semantic rule suppose if if it is 2 if it is 6 so, 6 plus 6, 6 plus 6 is equals to 8. So, E dot value is equals to 8. Okay, 6 plus 2 plus 6 is equals to 8. So, we will evaluate this one and we will give that evaluation to the root node. So, th so that that particular semantic rule will apply. So, that is the thing. Next. So, see here, for example, they have given so, this is the production and this is the semantic rule. So, this is the parse tree for the syntax directed translation. So, what is the first production here? H tends to E dollar. So, H tends to E dollar. So, see here H tends to E and dollar. Next, E tends to E plus E. E tends to E plus E we, we have written. Next, E tends to E star E. Next, E tends to I. E tends to I. Next, E tends to I. Next, I tends to digit, I tends to digit. So, see here, I tends to digit. So, this is a generation of parse tree. This is the generation of the parse tree from top to bottom, from top to bottom. Okay. After, after this one, we have to write the semantic rules. If we write this production, e, S tends to E dash. Next, we need to print the, if, print the E dot value. So, what are the value is there from bottom of fashion we will come here. So, here the digits are given 2, 3 and 5, 4, 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 4. If we evaluate this one, finally, it, we are going to get a value called 119. Okay. Based upon this operators, operators are there. Right? If we go on uh, substituting these semantic rules, finally, we are going to get 119 as an answer. Okay. For example, so see here, for example, they have given a production here, S, SGT is equals to, first production what they have given, E tends to 
V tends to E plus T. So, this is the first production. Next, E tends to T. E tends to T. Next, T tends to T star F. T tends to T stand. Wait. T tends to T tends to T star F, right? T star F. Next, T tends to F. T tends to F. Next, T tends to F. Next, F f tends to num f tends to num value f tends to num value f tends to num value suppose if we take a number here f value 2 here 3 here if you 4 if you go on evaluate this one so see here f tends to num so f tends to num so see here f tends to num. If we execute this one, this particular semantic rule we have to write f dot value is equals to num dot value. So, f dot value is equals to, so what is the value here? Whatever the num value is there, it will come here. Next, t dot, if we, if you have a reduction t tends to f, we need to apply that particular semantic rule. That is t dot value is equals to f dot value. What are the f value is there? We will write for the t value. So, f value we are having 2. So, t dot value is equals to 2. Next, so see here t tends to t star f that is t value is equals to t, t value into f value. Okay. T value into f value we will write here. Suppose f is having 3 right. So, here also 3 will come. Next, f is having 4 right. Here also f dot value is equals to 4. Next, 3 into 4. 3 into 4 is 4 3 is 12. 12 we will write here. Next, E tends to T means E value T value. So, T value come to the comes to the evaluation of E value. So, E dot value is equals to T value is having 2. So, here also 2. Next, finally, E tends to E plus T. E dot value is equals to E dot value plus T dot. So, E value is 2. Next, T value is equals to 12. 2 plus 12, 14. E dot value is equals to 14. So, this is the way that we need to follow and while we are transferring, okay, while we are applying this one, we need to check here when there is a reduction, we need, we need to, we need to follow the uh, bottom of fashion, bottom of fashion, we need to apply here, bottom of fashion, when we apply this one, so this is a, when we, so so, whatever the values we encode, encounter, we need to write here. So, so what is the output here? So, see here, if we come at the bottom. So, what are the numbers first we have to write? So, output will be a, now, when we come here, output f tends to num. So, first output is a 2. First, we will write the numbers. Next, similarly, when we go here, when we go here, again, f tends to num. So, here 3. Next, f value will be a 4. After this one, where, when we are traversing like this, so see here, first star operator comes, next, next finally plus operator. So, this is the output for this, this is the output for this. This is the way that syntax directed translation will work and you need to remember the most important thing is precedence and associativity. Power will have a first highest precedence and it is a right associativity that is if there is 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 first right side we have to evaluate okay right associativity next star is having the next highest priority second highest priority precedence value next it is a left associativity so it is a left associativity we need to follow okay N next plus is having the third highest precedence and and it follows the left left associativity okay so power is having the right associativity whereas star is having the left associativity whereas plus is having the left associativity only okay we need to do like this so even though so see here 2 plus 3 plus 4 if we calculate like this also 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 4 9 
so like that we need to follow so whenever a star comes first we need to evaluate the star then after only we need to evaluate the plus if there is a power first we need to evaluate the power next star next plus or minus whatever may be there so in this fashion we need to apply for this uh, for the productions okay for the evaluation of inputs next <coughs> so this is a syntax directed translation schema whatever we have done in the previous slide so this is the output the we have got okay so this is the infix to pre prefix notation infix to postfix notation when we do here so 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 we need to track like this so first two comes so two we have written next when we go here top to bottom like this top to bottom like this, next three will come next three we have written next if we go on like this if we go like this again four we have encountered so four we have written similarly if we go here next first um, star operator is there star we have written next if you go on like this if you go like this then finally we will encounter this plus okay we will find this plus and finally we will write this plus operator so this is an output for this so this is a output for the this is our output for the infix to postfix notation and similarly so infix to postfix notation so see here top down approach top down approach so whenever this production is executed we need to write this particular production rules we have to print same v tends to e plus t all these things so f tends to num so num value we have taken 2 3 and 4 okay if there is a production like this f tends to num f tends to num means print the num value that is 5 so 5 we have written and similarly all these things also okay top down approach next hmm. so see here there is a problem they have given x tends to x s double if, if there is like this we have to print one x tends to y means print to next <coughs> w tends to a sz means print 3 so see here first we first we need to design like this s tends to x s double so x x double so we need to design this string next w tends to sz so w tends to s z next we have to get again xx so uh, i can expand this one xs x x double so 4x we have got next y z z i want so so here i can write w right so w tends to s z so x tends to y i can write here so finally what we got here so see here 2x 4x next y z z so we have designed a solution for this one so see here if we traverse like this so x x x 4x y z and again z we have got again z if we have how output comes here so see here if we come at the bottom of fashion s tends to s y if if there is a production like this we need to print the first two two will be printed next if you go on like this next w tends to s z w tends to s z means print three so three we have to print next if you go on like this s tends to x s w that means we need to print the one next w tends to s z w tends to s z means we need to print the three and finally if you go like this s tends to x s w means so we have to print the value what one so two three next so first we are printing the two value next three value mm. next w again so w tends to x z w tends to x z means we need to print the three value again when we go back and finally we are going to print this value okay two first two next three again s tends to what so this is one 
next this is a 3 and 1 so the output will be like this 2 3 1 3 comma 1 so this is an output so this is the actual output just we need to follow the bottom up approach so just we need to follow the bottom up bottom up approach okay if you follow a bottom up approach then we can design like this okay so this is the thing next so these are the some of the applications of this syntax director translation evaluating a automatic expression infix to postfix prefix notation and all these things okay direct acyclic graphs all these are the example for this syntax director translation now see here what are the synthesis attributes what are the inherited attributes so this is the important topic here so synthesis attributes means the attributes can take a value from its children so see here a tends to bc right so a is the parent value and bc is the child values okay leftmost production is the parent value bc is the child value so production a production of the grammar a attribute is dependent on b and c attributes then it will be a synthesized attribute so if a parent value is depending upon children's okay is dependent on children's then we call that as synthesis attributes next if an attribute takes a value from its parent or from its siblings okay parents from its siblings is called as inherited attributes for example see here a tends to bc right is a production grammar where b attribute is dependent on a attribute or c attribute so see here b attribute b attribute is dependent on c attribute or else a, a attribute if this is the case then it is called as inherited attributes so l attribute okay l attribute and s attributes s attribute is always a subset of this l attributes okay always a subset of l attributes next s attributes are nothing but so see here in a bottom up person it will be using a bottom up person as the values of parent nodes depends upon the values of the child nodes so see here a tends to b c d right so a is dependent on b next a is dependent on c next a is dependent on d okay so if this is the case then we call this one as s attributes we call this one as s attributes okay next what is the l l attribute S, sgt an attribute can inherit a values from its left sibling only okay left sibling only it follows the depth first left to right passing for example so so see here a tends to xyz y dot s is equals to a dot s so here there is a um, y y is taking a value from left sibling y is taking a value from the left sibling next y dot s is equals to x so it is taking a value from the x so 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 this is also left and this is also left sibling okay y dot s is equals to z dot s that means y is taking a value from the right right sibling okay right sibling that this is not allowed in the l attribute so see here y dot as and y dot s is equals to x dot these two are allowed but y dot s is equals to z dot s violates the l attribute sgt definition as the attributes is inherited value from its right sibling so we should not inherit a value from the right sibling but we should inherit a value from the only the left siblings only if this is the case we call it as l attribute sgt okay so this is a problem they have given example problem so see here p1 is equals to s tends to mn p2 is equals to m tends to pq where s value is depend okay s value is equals to m m value plus n value so it is in synthesis attribute synthesis attribute if it is in a synthesis attribute automatically it will be in a l attribute we have studied in the previous slide uh, next so see here m tends to pq m tends to p and m tends to q it is also in s attribute only if it is in s attribute definitely it will be in a l attribute but see here p dot value is equals to q dot value that means p is taking a value from q 
it is a right sibling right sibling is it allowed in the l attribute it is not allowed in the l attribute so what is the correct option option c here so see here p1 is a l attribute but p2 is not a l attribute why because see here p1 s is a synthesis attribute in l attribute definition synthesis are allowed yes it is a subset right s attributes are subset of l attributes okay so it is a subset right so it is allowed so p1 follows the l attribute whereas p2 does not follow the l attribute because p is dependent on q which is a right hand side of the production which is not allowed which is not allowed we have discussed previously so this is the one of the example of syntax directed translation syntax directed translation okay which is an example of syntax directed translation so this is the a small concept of syntax director translation how we have to evaluate the syntax director translation and we have seen a couple of examples on syntax director translation so what is the s attribute what is the l attribute all these things we have seen here bottom of passing okay so this is an examples for this syntax director translation s attribute as well as l l attribute so this is a small topic of syntax director translation thank you